Hello, my name is Mary Mitchell. And those of you who know me know that I like to write stories about my ancestor. But today I'm going to start a series of videos about researching a wooden box. This wooden box. Here's the deal. In November 2020, our nation is going to celebrate the arrival of the Mayflower 400 years ago. And on that ship, of the 102 passengers, 13 were my direct ancestors. And there is a high probability that my great times eight grandfather, Stephen Hopkins, sat on this chest when he was crossing the ocean. I've done a little bit of research so far. I hired a specialist in furniture who consults for the PBS Roadshow, and he consulted with Sotheby's and said that yes, this chest was made in England during pilgrim times. And I've also researched my ancestor. And my great grandfather, Charles Hopkins, who brought this chest from Maine to California in the 1860s, helped found the California Mayflower Society. So I'm gonna show you what I know. I hope you'll follow along. Thanks for watching. First, let me tell you about the chest. It's 51 inches long, 21 inches wide, and 26 inches tall. One of the first things that made me suspect it was old is this latch. It doesn't work, and I, I don't think it ever could have because a key can't fit into it. But that's a very old piece of metal. Also, it has these pegs that it's held together with. You can see here, they're already falling apart. And all of this decoration has been done by hand. Stippling, there's some more pegs. Okay, it's a nice little decoration. Several different patterns. And I'll try to show you the side. We've got two panels on the side and four panels on the front. All right, this may be an original top, but the hinges that are on it are definitely newer. I'll open it in a minute. Let's see, somebody a long time back, here's some more of the pegs. Somebody a long time back must have tried to preserve it, put some kind of a coating on it. Um, you can see, unfortunately, here where it's been dinged. Here, it's hard. The light's not very good. Sorry. And here. Okay, let me open it up. So my mom remembers this chest always being in her grandparents' home in the dining room. Then, in 1955, when my grandmother died, my mom got it, and she kept it in her bedroom. She kept sweaters in it, and as you can see, I just keep pillows and stuff in it. But you can see it's pretty old. Got some writing on there, I don't know what that's all about. And that hinge is definitely new. And I suspect there's some kind of leather hinges before. Probably here, some kind of leather hinges. So now for the bowels of this chest. Look at that old planking. Here are the panels. See why right through it. Not sea tight, that's for sure. In some cases, screws have replaced. That's that's the wooden peg, and that's the replacement screw. Anyway, get, you get the idea, right? This thing's been around for a while. Here's the back of the lock. There must have been some other lock there at one point. And then someone else put this cover on the front. It really doesn't fit at all. Another thing that set me to wondering about the origin of this chest was when I saw its twin in the Polesden Lacey Manor. 
Holston Lacey isn't all that far from Hursley, which is where Stephen Hopkins was from. He was actually born nearby in Upper Clapford, but by the time he baptized his children, he was living in Hursley. That's also where his first wife, Mary, my great times eight grandmother, is buried. When I asked the docent at Poliston about the chest, she said it was one of their oldest possessions and that it was made in 1606. Stephen Hopkins left on his first trip to America on the Sea Venture in 1609. Needing a chest to take his belongings with him, he would have hired a carpenter to build a chest sometime between 1606 and 1609. Unfortunately, I wasn't allowed to take pictures at the Polson Lacey Manor. So I recently tried to find it on the internet. I came across this National Trust catalog of all the items they own, and look at what I found. It turns out that my great times eight grandfather wasn't the only one having a chest made in the early 1600s. They all have a lot in common. Sometimes they are called coffers and sometimes they are called chests. But when I looked up what the difference was, there really wasn't much. They're all strong boxes meant to carry valuables. Most of them have a lock, just where the Hopkins chest has a lock. Some are three panels, some are four panels. They have different kinds of decoration, but they all have four legs and they all have panels and they all have a lid. They're a convenient size because they can also be used as a bench or as a table. So what do you think? Does our Hopkins chest fit into this group? This is the chest attributed to Mary and William Brewster that is housed in Pilgrim Hall in Plymouth. It looks very different from all those English chests we just saw. William and Mary are also my ancestors, but they lived in Leyden, Holland before they came to America. And I'm willing to bet that their chest looks different because it was made in Holland, whereas our chest was made in England. All right, now I want to show you how we're related to Stephen Hopkins. I put together this little family tree. This is a family tree for my great-grandfather, Charles Harris Hopkins. He was born in Vassalboro, Maine in 1836 moved to California during the gold rush of somewhere around 1860 and died in San Francisco. He's the only one of his five siblings that left children, and that was only one son, my grandfather, Prince Hopkins. So Charles Harris Hopkins, who helped found the California Society of the Mayflower Descendants, was descended from Stephen Hopkins of the Mayflower in four different ways, those little orange people there. One is through the, his dad. So you go up to his father, whose name is Prince Hopkins. His father was named Prince Hopkins. His father was named Prince Hopkins. His father was Joseph, then Stephen, then Giles, who came on the Mayflower with his dad, and then the father, Stephen Hopkins. So Giles was the son of Stephen and his first wife, Mary, who died before the Mayflower sailed. Okay, number two ways, way is to follow um, his, Charles's great-grandmother, Patience Snow. I think that's his great-grandmother, yeah. So her father was Nathaniel Snow, Edward Jabez, and then Jabez's mother was Constance Hopkins, who's the sister of um, Giles, and also the daughter of Stephen and his first wife, Mary. Okay, the third way is if you follow Charles's grandmother, Phoebe Morse, who was born on Cape Cod, and her dad was Seth Morse, whose dad was Newberry Morse, whose mother was Elizabeth Doty, and if you're a Mayflower person, you recognize that name whose mother was Elizabeth Cook, another Mayflower name, whose mother was Damaris Hopkins, who's the daughter of Stephen Hopkins, and his second wife, Elizabeth. This is the wife that he came to America with on the Mayflower. They had a daughter named Damaris who sailed with them, but she died when she was nine years old, and then they had another daughter named Damaris, and that would be my great-great 
so whatever time is grandmother. Okay, and also Francis Cook and Edward Doty, who was a servant of Stephen Hopkins, came on the Mayflower. Okay, then the fourth way would be to follow Charles's great grandmother, Hannah Merrick, also born on Cape Cod. And her dad was Thomas Merrick, and then you have Joshua, and then his mother was Abigail Hopkins, who was a daughter of Giles, who you've seen before, the son of Stephen Hopkins. Okay, so all of these people in this area here, on my right side of that, came within about 10 years of each other to Plymouth Colony, and they settled, um, most of them, on Cape Cod. So then they just kept intermarrying, and these people were all on Cape Cod until right after the Revolution. And then this generation here, Prince Hopkins the second and his wife Phoebe moved in 1802, moved to Maine. First New Sharon and then Vassalboro. And then this set down here, um, who also are from Cape Cod, and they moved in the year later to Vassalboro, Maine. And then their children married Prince and Olive, and Prince and Olive had these five children. Okay, what do we do next? First, we need to find the will of my great-grandmother Mary, after whom I was named, um, because she is the one who left this chest to my mother. She skipped a generation. She didn't give it to her son to give to my mother. I know why, but that's a secret. Two, I have to figure out a place for this chest to go. It cannot stay in this tiny living room any longer because my grandsons are going to destroy it. Or if they don't, a California fire will. So, I have three places in mind so far, and I am happy for suggestions. One, Pilgrim Hall in Plymouth. I've already written them letters and sent them pictures. They haven't responded, and it's been two years, so maybe they don't want it. Number two, the Smithsonian. I have an email. It took me a while to get something. Even that, to send to them, but I'll send them a query. And two, three, would be the Mayflower Society itself. They have a big building in Plymouth, but I'm not so sure they have room for another piece of furniture. So we'll see. Anyway, that's what we're going to do next. I hope you stay with me. If you have any comments, any suggestions, put them in the comments below, and I'll talk to you next time. Thanks. If you would like to follow this series, check the subscribe button below. You will receive an email when I post my next video. Don't worry, you will not hear from me more than once a week. Till next time.